Hello there and a very warm welcome. Are you like me, possibly a little bit bewildered and even overwhelmed by all the changes in the world? And maybe you feel a kind of a calling inside to try and help or make a difference or do something, but you're not quite sure how to go about it. I'm Liesl Tevisham of SavvySelfGrowth.com and I have today with me my colleague and friend and very well-respected strengths mentor, Dries Lombard. I'm going to share a few bits about him and then we'll dive into the questions. Dries is widely regarded as one of the most experienced strengths coaches and consultants in the world. His journey with strength started in 2005 and he became the first strength finder trainer for coaches outside of the USA. By now he has coached, trained and consulted, consulted with thousands of individuals and, and, and high profile teams all over the world. His new book, Launch Your Brilliance, is available on Amazon. And he lives in Pretoria, South Africa, with his beautiful family, his wife, four daughters, and three dogs. Dries, such a warm welcome to you. Thanks, Liesl. Great to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. So, I've been working with Strengths Finder, Gallup, Gallup Strengths, for the first five years, and I started learning with Dries, and I can't even begin to describe how much it has impacted my life in a positive way, my life and my work. So I'm going to specifically ask you about one very burning question for me and the people that I work with. But before we do that, I want to just give a little bit of background for the people that may not know about strengths yet. So Dries, if you could share from your big experience a bit about Gallup Strengths. What is Gallup Strengths? The bit of a background, where did it start? And just what you can share with us to set the scene for why we're going to talk about it. Sure. Thank you, Liesl. Yeah, so some people may have heard about the Gallup Corporation. They're actually best known for the presidential polling that they do every four years and so, and they're a research company, US-based. But out of their research, there often comes a lot of beautiful and powerful uh, new things and perspectives. And the whole uh, strength measurement is one of those things that, that came out of Gallup. Um, about <clears throat> uh, made public about 20 years ago, but the whole strength movement and research from Gallup is actually uh, more than 50 years that they've been busy with studying people all over the world, literally by now millions of people. In terms of your most natural strengths. And um, they, uh, they kind of over the years developed that into first into their consulting, in-house consulting, and then made it public in, in publications, um, started to write about it. And then they developed the first called the Strength Finder Assessment. And now lately, recently, it's been changed to the Clifton Strengths Assessment. <clears throat> and it's important to note that this is not your typical psychometric assessments. Okay, it's, um, it's got a different uh, approach and edge to it. So basically what it, what it measures is 34 different descriptions of individual energy and individual need. It's the way I love to describe it. Um, Gallup's description is that it's a talent, it measures talent, and a talent is a recurring pattern of how you think, feel, and behave. Um, when I use it, I describe it as a description of your most natural and comfortable energy that you bring towards other people and it's always in yourself. And then also your most uh, prevailing need, the needs you have. So the, the, the strength-based approach, what I love most about it, Liesl, is the fact that it's rooted in positive psychology. 
the, the, the strength-based approach um, comes from uh, a perspective that we focus not in what is wrong with you and what needs to be fixed about you, but it focuses on what is right with you and what can we build on that's already in you. It's already confirmed to be part of you, its potential, and in some cases undiscovered. But the moment we can help you to first discover it through the assessment and then dive deeper into it and um, embrace it through a journey that you take and you get to know it, uh, then turn it into natural strengths. So um, I think the most important part that, that I, would, uh, I would like to, to use when I describe it is when we talk about strengths, uh, it's not about something you necessarily do well. Out there, when someone asks you about your strengths, like in a job interview, you, you gravitate towards the things you can do well. We see that as skills. And, and the interesting thing is that you can be skilled, trained, equipped, knowledgeable about something, and you can be brilliant at it and hate it. All right. So it means that it's a developed skill that's actually invested or built upon a weakness, yeah. not a strength. So in our approach from a strength based approach and in Gallup's approach, a strength is got a lot to do with your emotion. Strength is a pattern of how you think, feel and behave that strengthens you. It makes you feel strong when you use it, when you're in that environment. <clears throat> and a weakness is the opposite. It's an environment or an interaction or an activity that drains the life out of you. So you, you can literally feel weakness coming over you and you feel resistance. That means you're in your weakness zone. So the, the strength finder assessment and a strength-based approach is positive. What's right with you then discover it and then embrace it um, and then develop it to see how can you most of the time uh, invest and use your natural talents and therefore your strengths uh, in any situation, work, private life, relationships, wherever. And uh, the interesting thing, Liesl, as you would know, is that we if we embrace it or know about it or not, we need not to know anything about this. It's already part of us. Um, we, we simply probably don't have words for it, but we know what we feel. We, we know energy, we know excitement, we know anxiety, we know fear. And Strength Finder gives words to it and descriptions to it. So you can pinpoint, ah, that's what's going on. That's where I am. And uh, so, so that's basically strengths and, and, and where it comes from. That is such a beautiful summary of, I know all the experience and the huge number of hours you've done. I just love how you said it all. It puts it all beautifully in context for me. And I, I want to say from my own experience as well as finding out my own strengths the first time and working with clients with their strengths. It's the most amazing thing that I think it brings as well as the language for us to describe what it is that we can do naturally that's that comes easily that makes us feel like oh I'm in love with my work or with my life you know just the things we, we often know the things that bring us joy but we don't have a word or a, or a language to describe what it is that that I bring like for me empathy if I could just have empathy with somebody I feel immediately strong like I'm in, I'm in my strength. And so this just gives us that language. It's like words that we can have common descriptions between people. That's it. <laughs> yes. And so what are some of the things that you've seen, Dries? Like what does it do for people when they find out with, with Clifton strengths? Okay, so here's, here's some of the strengths that I bring. And here's some of the weaknesses that that come with these strengths, you know, we, we, we have both. Um, what do you see that happens for people when they know these things? Hmm. 
I'll tell you one of the most common responses I get the first time that people not only get the results, but when you talk them through it, which is an important part of it. Um, here's the most common response. So I'm not crazy. That's what you get. <laughs> oh, or, amazing. Oh, so there's nothing wrong with me. Uh, wow. So, so this is actually good. How can this be good? I was fighting this my whole life. I thought this was a weakness. Now you tell me it's a strength, etc. So that that realization uh, is the most common um, I get with people, or some some other things is confirmation. So people will look at it and say, "Oh yes, I know this. I so love the words and the description and the definition." to confirm what I've known a, a, a long time. And, and so that could even take their confidence and self-awareness to, to a new level. Um, to summarize, I think what it, what it does, if, <clears throat> if someone embraces it and take it seriously, um, is it brings them to life. Uh, it, it makes them come alive. <clears throat> There's nothing, more rewarding for a coach than to see that your involvement in their life brings something new and some new aspect of being alive to them uh, and and how you can assist them to change their perspective and their mind about themselves and how you can change things with this from a negative mindset or an uncertainty or doubt into embracing who I am, loving myself, and then managing it well. Because most often, what I also see with clients, it, it's not the talent or the mix of strengths that's the culprit, if I can call it that way. It's your mismanaging of that energy, your misunderstanding of it, and you would know a phrase that I often use is a, a well-managed talent becomes a strength. A mismanaged talent becomes a detriment. And often we, we're stuck in a, a loop or a cycle of detrimental behavior or relationships or whatever. And we don't know why, because we're just trying to be who we are. And then this helps us realize, you know, if I change a couple of things in terms of either how I think, feel, behave, if I change the response towards other people, or if I apply it differently, if I turn up the volume sometimes or it down other times, if I tap into certain talents at a specific context or avoid specific impulses, then the detriment changes into impact and positive impact everywhere and uh, so so that to me is is the power of the realization when people encounter this for the first time but if i if i may add one thing and you know i feel very passionate about this is it all depends on 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 what you're willing to invest in yourself the currency of self-development is time that's the currency. And if you're not willing to invest time in yourself, what can happen with something like strengths or the Clifton strengths or any other assessment or coaching or therapy for that matter, if you think it's a quick fix, hit and run, let me just do it and read the report. Then it turns into what I call a firework display. So you might find it very entertaining or powerful in the moment. You may get new realizations and you may even be in awe and share it with people. But I can promise you this out of many years of experience, like any firework display, it will go dark again. And the only way to prevent that from happening is turn that energy that shoots fireworks and invest in a journey that I equate to launching a space rocket, which gives it, it gives it a destination. Decide where you want to go and what you want to invest. And the same energy and power 
then becomes sustainable and you, you see that it won't burn out. It will burn stronger and it will become, become part of your life or part of your team culture or part of your family, part of your parenting, part of your marriage, but most of all, part of yourself. And if it's part of yourself, it's sustainable. Mm, I, I absolutely love that because I talk a lot about sustainability as well. Is it the things that are not sustainable for us or just, it's like, uh, you know, that, that we drop things like flies. Oh, I want to start this lovely thing and then I do it for two days and it falls by the wayside. It helps nothing, right? We have to be able to do things sustainably day after day. It's like, then we have a life that we don't have to escape from. Mm. Um, and I, I just want to come back to what you were talking about a few minutes earlier about the detrimental effect that it can have if we um one of the words i like to use is some of our strengths can hijack us mm -hmm. so it just sits there and sort of almost commands the rest and that's what sometimes even the strength of empathy that i have that i love and enjoy but it can hijack me as well it's like it can make my life unpleasant and that's I think where the growth journey comes in right as we have to get to know it so well and that doesn't happen from reading a report no absolutely not and, and in, like in, in anything you know um, this may sound silly but it's actually a very powerful analogy um, you can take out a gym membership you can even go for a tour with the instructor through it Good luck with getting fit if you don't spend time inside the gym, you know. <laughs> and and a report or an assessment like Strength Finder is like taking out a membership. Um, there will be no results that's lasting if you don't put in the hard work. But the the great thing is, if you engage with with someone who's trained and competent in assisting you with it, that journey becomes exciting. It becomes fun. It's positive. It, it's empowering um, and, and people love it. It's, it's definitely not painful. <laughs> it's, it's freeing you up um, and it's giving you life. Yes, yes, yes. I love that so much. I see that so often in myself. I know this five year journey, only five years that I've had so far um, and what it's done for me to be able to be reminded of what are the things that's right about us and building confidence that way is an amazing journey so so empowering so Dries, the the question all of this i wanted to set the scene and you've done, done it incredibly well is we all have different strengths as you said those 34 but none of us are the same and in fact the strengths finder tool i think is one of the things that help to point out how unique we are not how much we fit into this little box of strengths, right? That's, it's a very unique, unique um, way of describing what energy and needs we bring. Mm. So I work with many sensitive people, sensitive introverts, HSPs, empaths, just people who think deeply, who care about the world. And there's so much going on on Mother Earth at the moment. There's the pandemic, that's mm -hmm. like a lot of changes are happening in the world. There's global movements, well, like, uh, what do you call it, uh, the uh, global warming or climate change, whatever you want to call it. There's Black Lives Matter. It seems like in 2020, this is when we're having this interview, just all these massive things are happening in the world that require change. It's like the melting pot is, you know, the heat has turned up. Lots of things are changing. And the people that I work with have caring hearts. They care about things. They care about people. They want to make a difference. And I find often that they, they're not the same kind of activists as the people on the front lines of protests, say. Mm. And then they can feel guilty because they want to make a difference, but it doesn't feel like that's who they are, those frontline people who, who shout and... I would love if you can give us a few thoughts and ideas of how can we each do our bit for the things that we believe in, in a way that fits us, this, these strengths that we've been talking about. If you've got some ideas for us about how to go about that. Great, great question and, and extremely uh, important, I think, in, in these times, as you've pointed out. 
So <clears throat> let you let me let me give you an an image to start with um, from history. Uh, and there's a, a wonderful movie, Apollo 13, with Tom Hanks. It's the story of well, this this movie is about after the first moon landing. Remember when something went wrong um, for for a team that went up to the moon. Um, and what's so important about this, and we get it in life always, is, is you get the heroes. And the astronauts that went up in the space shuttles, the astronauts that first and after the first time also landed on the moon, etc., they seen as the heroes, the change makers. Um, you know, they, they remembered um, and they celebrated. But what makes the whole story of Apollo 13 so powerful is the realization from what happened, the moment when the message came from Apollo back to Earth that said, Houston, we have a problem. And the astronauts could do nothing about it. There was nothing they could do. Their life was in danger and time was running out. And suddenly <clears throat> a whole team and a whole support base of hundreds, if not thousands of people behind the scenes activated in different ways. They activated in doing numerous different support based important elements to bring those heroes back home safely and to save the day. And at the end, there was very, very little that the astronauts could have done or did to save their own lives. They responded on instructions from the team on what they should do, where they should go, when they should do what. And that's uh, the, the story of Apollo 13. And, and this is very much the same. You know, the, the other day, I thought about the following, that if you think back to history, that often we've seen that the world could be, and often to an extent was nearly destroyed by a single person. But the world was never ever rebuilt by a single person. The world is always restored and rebuilt by multitudes of people doing what? Doing what they find to do in their immediate environment. So, so getting to your, um, your question, um, we often project on, from a talent-based or a strength-based perspective towards the visible people, the influencers, <clears throat> the kind of um, people with, with the huge inf what we call influencing or executing themes. And they're the two groupings or domains that's always visible and measurable and get the praise, okay? But then we have the groups that you refer to and that we, you work with most, the relational talents and the thinking talents, which by nature is behind the scenes, undercover, hidden. I love also to refer to mostly all of those two domain talents as the supporting themes. They're not the launchers. They're not even the cruisers. They're not the landers. They're the supporters. They are the guys who people turn to when they say, Houston, we have a problem, okay? And we're up here, it's nothing we can do. And the dependence, if you, if you think about it in, in the current uh, pandemic over the world and many other things. Um, it's, it's, it's if we neglect our singular roles from who we are and the, the impact that we make one life at a time and one person at a time and one reaction of it at a time that the world is suffering even more and more. And, and the, whole, the whole approach, and I think the whole beauty of talents like connectedness, empathy, harmony, 
developer, individualization, etc., which are the sensitive people. They sensitive, let me just say this. I, I said strengths are from positive psychology, and I always love to play with words. The world took sensitivity and made it extremely negative. We look at people and we go like, oh, you're so sensitive. Okay, and then people embrace that from a, from a young age and they go like, yeah, I'm sensitive. Okay, here's the beauty about sensitive. And I'm saying this as someone who's not sensitive. And um, the beauty of it is it comes from being sensing. You can sense. You have an intuitive ability that very few people have. You sense the you, you pick up on the unspoken, on the unseen. And that's why in times like this, it's so, so difficult for the sensors or the sensitive people because they pick up on pain. They pick up on suffering. They pick up on a broken world. They pick up on conflict. And it hurts and, and, and it's troubling. And then comes what you refer to to what can I do? What, what should I do? How can I change this? And, and to understand first or foremost that your sensing ability is beautiful and powerful. Because the problem often with most of the influencers and people who make the decisions, and I won't name names, but I think there's many top leaders in the world currently, is that they cannot sense anything when it comes to emotion or peace or harmony or unity. They, they in other words, sense less. Wow. Um, and therefore, insensitive. And therefore, their decisions and actions become brutal. Okay? And it, it's hurtful and it's damaging. All right. So, so we need to distinguish first before we can talk of what can I do? We need to go back and say, where is this, where's this coming from? And understand there's nothing wrong with me. Uh, what I have is an ability and something that's been put in me that's extremely needed. All right. Then we, we come to the part that you ask about the impact. Now, what, what do I do? I think Liesl, from my perspective, the first thing that people who's highly sensing uh, should realize is that part of the uniqueness and the brilliance of who you are and how you've been created to be is that your task or role or function is not to get on a stage. Your role is not to start a website or a huge podcast or take up banners and go outside where everyone can see you and become an audible, visible voice, okay? If, if you want to link up to actions like that, that you believe in the cause, that the influencers, for instance, organize, and you feel safe to link up to that camp part of it, by all means, do it. But never feel guilty or so if you're not the initiator, because it's not your role. You're the supporter and you're the supporter in much more than the global stage of visibility. The support starts with people close to you. And in any way, that's the people that the, the, the sensors or sensitive or relational people and even the thinkers have the most influence on is those you know, trust and love, not strangers. And, and to give the kind of interactive support and being there in body, mind, in soul towards people that you can help in any way possible. It can be uh, a phone call. And it, it, can, it can even be, and you will know where I'm coming from, Liesl, because I know you get this. It can even be a thought. Yeah. Thinking about people. Others, others will use the language of pray for them. Okay? Yes. But it's, it's connecting. And, and there is such a power, and I don't want to sound you know, weird, 
but there's such a power that we bring by when, when a talent, any talent, when a talent enters a room, the energy changes. And when you enter the room or an environment, okay, and you're aware of it and you allow it to flow, you allow it to be there. Beautiful talents. When, when a talent of empathy <clears throat> enters a room, the emotional awareness lifts. And people with low empathy, like me, suddenly become aware of emotion. And I don't know where this comes from. I suddenly be And then I realize it's because this person came into my space and I'm tapping from them and from their energy and their needs and they make me aware. They point me without pointing me. They show me without speaking. And, and this is not weird voodoo stuff. This really happens. And, and all, we, we all do that. I know it happens when I enter a room as a strong thinker. If I get part, if I be part of a discussion or so, suddenly people start thinking deeper and asking penetrating questions and analyzing stuff without me challenging them to do so. Why? I'm there and I'm not shy of my energy and I am who I am. And because I want to serve them, I don't pull back on my energy. I don't hide it. I don't cringe. I open up and, and I'm, and I'm fully, fully there. And this, this starts with people closest to you, but it goes out to strangers as well. You know, just the other day, I had a, I had a wonderful experience. I went out to the store and as you know we all masked up and it's strangest surreal experience and i was standing in line uh, at the store and there was a lady in in the as the line went and my eyes looked at her and and i kind of acknowledged and smiled and you know what she did she took a mask she brought it down she smiled at me and she put it back Oh, and she changed my day. She changed. I don't know her at all, but I know something about her. I bet you she's a sensor. I can promise you she's someone who knows that her smile changed my day and that I needed that smile. And she was not hiding it in this case behind a mask, but I, <laughs> In, if it's a normal world, she'll never hide it. She'll walk around giving her energy to strangers and, 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 and everyone. And, and that, be, to me, is the image, I think, if people ask, what can I do? You're already doing it. Just embrace it and give it fully, visibly or invisibly, doesn't matter. You know, uh, Sensitive people have a head start in life. Of course, you don't have to fight for visibility or an audience or a stage to do your magic. You can just be. But take an influencer or an executor and take away the visibility, the audibility, the stage, they're powerless. That's when the power of the sensors moves in. They say, we don't need a stage. We just change the world by being and by acting and by moving our mask and smiling at someone, a stranger. And, and I think that's the, the power of embracing who you are, knowing who you are, and then making an impact in these times as well. Well, I must say I was in tears a few times. Um, this was so validating. I can't tell you how much it meant to me to just sit here to and you know be validated like that for the strengths that i already bring that i don't have to try and fight for making them visible in any way they just come out just by being me just by smiling behind a mask even and i know that the people who will listen to this will just feel the same as i will they will feel in tears in their heart from mm -hmm. gratitude and just being so validated. Dries, this was one of the most inspiring conversations probably that I've ever had. Thank you, Liesl. Thank you. <laughs> Knowing coming from you as an authentic person, I really take that to heart. And, and thank you. And, and also, again, uh, thank you for 
what you do for 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 sensitive people uh it it's so powerful because the world will die without the people who can sense will die and to a large extent the world is dying currently because of the way that sensitive people are treated and sometimes that's that goes with a brand sometimes it goes with looking at people and say oh this is your uh, your sexual affinity so we put your this is your religious affinity or, or whatever sometimes it even goes to a brand and and the world dying and and it's this this embracing of difference and understanding difference is not wrong difference is strong that will heal the world and i, I say this with with true honesty of being someone you know me uh, my my relating themes my sensing themes are very low i rely on people like you and people in my family to just tell me listen this is now terrain where you must tread lightly and if i don't have people like you and so on i would just hurt people so please go on doing what you're doing and all of all of the people out there that relates to this we need you we really do thank you dries from the bottom of my heart this was beautiful so inspiring and i know it's going to make a difference for lots of people for a long time we needed to hear this and thank you for being you and for validating the differences that's one of the most beautiful things about strength is we need everybody oh, yeah. we need all the strengths we as sensitive people need you as well sure. so um i will put the links to your website and your social media and everybody of every possible thing that you bring into the comments and into the write-up of this beautiful wonderful interview Dries. so thank you so much and thank you to everybody who spent their time with us today thank you for your time thank you <laughs>